Good morning, everyone. All right, well, it's uh, just about 9 a.m. And as I sit here, I'm looking at very real possibility of not taking any trades today. The biggest gapper is only 24%. I should not have traded yesterday. I should not have traded the day before. I am red on the week, two red days. I have restricted my share size today to 6,000, one share, which means I can take a 6,000 share position and that's it. So 3,000 shares is my starter. 6,000 would be full size today, 10 cents. If I can make 600 bucks, I'll be happy with that. I'll shut it down. What I don't want is a third big red day. And that's why I've restricted my share size today. You know, I could very easily come in today and trade 40, 50,000 shares of something and lose another $25,000, $30,000. It's incredible how quickly you can lose 30,000. I can, I promise you, I can lose $30,000 a day for the rest of the year. If you want me to try to do that, I can absolutely do it. I guarantee it. It would be a lot easier to lose 30,000 a day than to make 30,000 a day. So you have to be very disciplined. And right now I've gotten a little uh, complacent and a little sloppy. Uh, you know, I've come off a really good hot streak over the last year. I've had a couple of, uh, you know, I've had a couple of uh, slumps, but generally I've had a good hot streak. So right now, while I'm still in pretty good shape. I went from up about 100,000 on the month back to break even. So I'll switch this no audio and there you go. So I'm, I'm sitting at about break even on the month. Uh, in January, I went down 150, then came back to green. In February, I went down 300 and then came back to green. This month I went up 100 and now I'm back to flat. So, you know, we still have a full week left. I mean, you know, today, we have eight days left today, tomorrow, Friday, and then all of next week. But it's a cold market. So probably the right move yesterday and on Monday would have been to trade with half or a quarter of the size I was trading with and just expectations from a $20,000 day to more of a $5,000 day, a quarter of what my typical goal would be. Um, but now because I've had two big red days, I've got to stop the bleeding. <laughs> and that's where restricting share size comes into play. Restricting share size is not about trying to cap my winners. It will have that inevitable effect, uh, which is why I hate restricting share size because there's no way I'm going to make $25,000 trading a typical small cap stock with only 6,000 shares. But I can't be focusing on that right now. What I have to focus on is managing my risk and limiting my downside. So if I do have a third red day, it's not another 30 or $40,000 red day. It's maybe at the most 5,000 or something like that, which is manageable. So that's kind of my mindset today. It's, I'm not um, in a super positive mood and that's partly because of two red days in a row and then coming in this morning and seeing that our leading gapper is only 25% and the two behind it are 140 and 180 million share float stocks. So if we do not have the volume and we do not have the volatility that I need to have a big green day. So I can tell you today's probably not gonna be a big green day. Uh, it could be a small day, you know, it could be a small green day. And if I can get 10 cents out of the market, that would be, that would be enough. Now, uh, our leading gapper is ATHE, and this one looks terrible. I don't like the chart at all. Uh, it's too cheap. It's right around the 200 moving average. I just don't like it at all. It's a 34 million share float. The second leading gapper is WBT. It's 140 million share float. Don't like it at all. OCGN is the third leading gapper. It's 182 million share float. It is moving a little bit more. It has almost 10 million shares of volume. Uh, and you can see it did a pullback here, but this, this entire five, this is 15 minutes and it's gone up 10 cents. 15 minutes, 10 cents. This is just way too slow for me to be interested. I just, 
don't have the interest in holding something for 15, 20 minutes to only make five or 10 cents a share. So congratulations for those that you know might have bought the dip at one point, but I just, I just don't think that it's worth it for me right now. So, you know, a tie a day is up here at 667. It's easy to borrow, so you could focus on looking for a short, but still your range isn't that high. So I'm just, um, I'm just not that interested in trading these that have a, such, a small, such a small range. So that's OCGN, uh, AEI, I saw there was just a headline on that. Uh, 9 a.m. news came out. Hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. Volume's very light. So next leading Gabber INTT, it's a 9 million share float. Hmm. Doesn't look all that interesting to me and I don't see news on it. So that those are our top four gappers. Uh, so really nothing looking that great this morning. I, um, I, I would say something that's kind of a, uh, it's a contradiction to say that this is a great time for a beginner trader to be in the market because you think, well, there's nothing moving. But it is a great time as a beginner trader to be practicing in the simulator, to be studying, to be watching the level two, to be learning the price action. Even on something like OCGN, you can learn those behaviors of level two of big seller on the ask getting bought up or hidden seller on the bid or whatever it absorbing shares. You can practice. And then when things do start to pick back up, you're going to be in better in a better position than if you come into the market when it's hot. But most traders come into the market when it's hot because that's when they finally are like, okay, I, I, I've got to jump in. I've got to get a piece of this action. Everyone, I see everyone say, everyone's making money trading except me. That's, that's not true, but that's the perception that they might have. So they jump in finally. But getting in and starting during a hot market, there's a couple problems with that. Number one, you shouldn't trade with real money when you first jump in. So as a disclaimer, trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money. My results are not typical. Since most beginners lose money, you should trade in a simulator before you put real money on the line, which means if you get started during a hot market and you trade with real money, you still might find yourself losing. That's uh, number one. Number two, if you do it and you trade in a simulator, then by the time you're ready to start trading with real money, the market may be cooling off. And then you feel like, wow, now I'm gonna start trading with real money during a cold market, which is not ideal. So. It's actually a great time to be studying and practicing when it's cold. So you're getting trained, you're getting ready for the next hot market, the next hot cycle, whenever it is. And I know that that's not the way it normally works, but for those you know that are in the position right now, I encourage you just to practice, trade in that simulator. And I, I don't have a lot of interest in you know sitting here, I'm not gonna trade in a simulator and I'm not gonna just trade all day long just for the sake of gaining more experience. I don't feel that at this point in my career, that's something I really have an interest in doing, but I think it is a good idea for students. So uh, all that is to say that this is a good time to be practicing, a good time to be studying. The market uh, will pick back up. And when it picks back up, it could be intermittent. We could have you know one day where you have a three, 400% short squeeze, and then the next day is slow again. And that's kind of what happened last week. We had some really good opportunities on Thursday and Friday. And I tried to kind of roll that those profits into the next big trade. Boom, back to flat. So yeah, this is a good time to sharpen the ax. Get dialed in, keep practicing. And you know, if you're trading with real money, I would probably set your daily goal at about a quarter of what it normally would be. If your daily goal is 200, I'd probably reduce that to like 50 bucks, 25 bucks. I know it doesn't feel like a lot, might not even feel like it's worth it, but you would be gaining experience. You would be keeping your head above water, even with just $25, $50 a day, whatever it is. And then when things get to the other side, you'll be glad you did it. So, and Larissa has been leading the way in that approach. And I think that that's absolutely the right move. This just, unfortunately, isn't the market to take 40, 50,000 shares. It just doesn't justify that level of risk. And of course, 
I did exactly that on Monday and Tuesday. And that's why I'm now down $100,000 on the week because, you know, like an idiot, I decided to be really aggressive and try to turn my $100,000 month into a $200,000 month in two days and instead gave, up, gave back everything I made. So I'm sitting break even on the month. I would like to be green on the month. I have eight days left. So, you know, a thousand a day, two thousand a day for the next eight days will put me back to up eight, ten thousand on the month. And that will be a green month. It's not a lot as far as it goes for me, but it's green. So that's that's kind of what I'm looking at, not to be super focused on the dollar amount, but I of course would like to be green. We all would, so. Uh, and that's realistic. It's also totally possible that I could keep doing exactly what I've been doing for the last two days and go deep red in the month. So rather than going deep red and then having to try to get back to flat by the end of the month, I, I'm flat right now. So let's just try to keep, you know, keep my head above water and see if I can finish the month without a, another big red day. So risk management. We've got about 20 minutes to the bell. And, you know, as I said, I, I wish there was something that looked really good this morning, but I don't see anything that looks really good. So when I don't have a good gap and go trade, which I haven't had yesterday or the day before, I'm not getting a pre-market cushion. And then by the time we're going to the bell, we're just watching the Momo scanner and it just feels like there's an inherent uh, slowness in the market right now. A lot of traders sitting on the sidelines. A lot of traders probably smarter than me who are saying, you know what? I'll open their eyes, look at the gap scanner, leading gappers 21%. I'm going back to bed. I'm not, what's the point? I'm going back to bed. I'm not going to fight through this. This is ridiculous. And I get that. You know, and that, on the other hand, is one of the things that's really nice about being a trader is the fact that you can just say, all right, you know what? Today's a day where maybe I'd rather go do something else I enjoy. Go, I don't know, spend some time with the kids or whatever, whatever it might be. So, yeah, just uh, hanging tight right now. So, OCGN is up. 10 cents. I mean, it hit 66, it dropped down here and it popped back up. I'm not interested in trading this. This doesn't have enough. It's not enough for me. I'm just not interested. So those who want to trade it, do as you'd like. It just isn't enough for me. 
It's only up 20%. So as a reminder for those on uh, YouTube, this week is the last week of the morning show. I'm going to be away next week. And then we're going into kind of the summer months with traveling and things like that. I will we'll run the morning show here and there, but it'll be a little bit more um, sporadic just based on my schedule. So I encourage you guys uh, who are tuning in, enjoy today, enjoy tomorrow, enjoy Friday. And then uh, I hope to see you maybe in the community as a student going into next week. I'll still, we'll be streaming for our students, but uh, YouTube will just be recaps for a little bit. Nice, Gary. That's awesome. So those of you guys on um, YouTube, let's see. Find a link. Uh, one of our students who has his $750,000 badge said, I tell you what, I wish I would have joined Warrior Trading in 2019 so I could have traded with the knowledge I have now in 2020 when the market was hot. Yeah, I I hear you. I, I wish that I had started sooner myself. And, you know, I... I think almost every trader will feel that way. Once they get started, I wish I had started sooner. But starting today is better than continuing to sort of just let the market continue to pass you by. Every day the market is providing opportunities, so it's better to get started sooner rather than later. Let's see, okay, right, so those on YouTube, I'll give you a link here um, to register to a replay of my free day trading class. So you guys can check that out if you're interested, those on YouTube. That'll be at uh, one o'clock today. So what I'm most likely to do when the market gets really slow is start to look more at large caps. Uh, we have the large cap room. We have a whole community of traders that focus on large caps. So I don't want to step too much on their toes and start trading small large caps in the small cap room but that's uh, that's generally what i would focus on when things get slow if it's slow for sort of an extended period of time just because the large cap stocks will still provide some levels of volatility on a daily basis
So we've got about 10 minutes to the bell here. Uh, leading gapper is OCGN up 22%. This one has news. It's continuing a little bit higher. These pullbacks are moving up. It's got a high of 680. But the float's 182 million shares, so it's a bit of a higher float. Right now, I'm not interested in it. It's only up 22%. It's just not up enough for me to really have interest in it. I'm looking for stocks up 40, 50% at this point, or 100%. 20%, 22% just doesn't really fit the bill for me at this point uh, to take the risk on it. Every trade carries risk, so I don't want to take the risk on something that's not really, really moving quickly. It's either moving straight up or I'm not interested. ATHE, too cheap, don't like it, 34 million share float, leaving it alone. WBT, 141 million share float, the float's too high, the price is too high. I mean, the price isn't too high, I guess, but the float's too high. Uh, INTT, this one, $10 stock. No news that I can see. I'm leaving that one alone for the time being. Uh, I just don't think that it's my cup of tea. Uh, SMTS, 162 million share float. This one has uh, a high of 329, and I'm just not really that interested in that one either. Uh, floats too high. Job is a 63 cent stock. That one's a bit too cheap. AIH is a 23 million share float. Um, not a lot of chart to work with on this that's that interesting. Leaving that one alone. DTSS jumping down a couple. $3 stock. It's got news. It is a former momentum stock, but uh, today, the chart pre-market doesn't really look that interesting, so I don't see anything there either. So at this point, with 10 minutes to the bell, our, uh, my best hope would be for some news at 9.30 after the open. TRKA, this one, IPO'd yesterday. I was curious about it, but it just opened and sold off. So it, it w didn't end up being a good IPO, unfortunately. So IPOs right now. I don't have any interest in trading those. So back to OCGN, the leading gapper. The only way for me to make decent money on this would be to trade it with 40, 50,000 shares. And unfortunately, I don't think this is the right market for me to be doing that in. That's uh, what got me into trouble Monday and Tuesday. So I just have to wait for better opportunities to come along. And uh, maybe that'll be later today. Maybe it won't be till tomorrow or next week. But I really am better off uh, waiting for better opportunities than trying to trade with 50, 75,000 shares a stock that's only up 22%. I just don't think that that's right for me. So right now I am, um, you know, basically grinding the last couple weeks, made some money, gave a little back, made some money, gave a little back. So I'm kind of in a, a little bit of a uh, treading water consolidation sideways, waiting for the next move to the upside. And that's going to come when the market heats back up. And you know it will. And I know that on a day when we have a stock up four or 500%, those are the types of days that I can make $75,000, $100,000. So I've just got just to gotta wait for it. You know, trade the market you're in. So that's kind of the game plan right now. Eight minutes to the bell. The IPOs today, I'm not that interested in, mostly because the two IPOs I was watching yesterday both failed. They weren't they weren't good IPOs. Um, and there's nothing that's super hyped up that I'm looking at, like the Coinbase IPO, which honestly was garbage. It was a garbage IPO, and um, this is this is a joke. It's a total joke. I saw uh, a couple days ago that um, insiders sold millions and millions and millions of shares between 380 and 410 on the day of that IPO. Yeah. Uh-huh. No surprise there. We saw those big sellers. So this is just a kind of garbage market right now, but um, that's okay. And I know it was a direct offering, but everyone's calling it an IPO, but it, it doesn't really, it, it it's whatever you want to call it. The initial um, offering to the public there was pretty ugly. So, yeah, we've got seven minutes to the bell, and I'll be watching the High Day Momo scanner. So I'm going to move the gap scanner over, watch the High Day Momo scanner. 
I don't have any large caps that I'm watching uh, particularly today. Uh, you can certainly check to see what some of the traders in the large cap room are looking at, but I don't have anything that I'm super dialed in on right now. I most importantly just want to try to have a small green day or a zero trade day rather than have a, uh, another red day. So that means looking for the one, the one that looks good and the one that I can get um, you know, a nice trade on 10 cents a day with 5,000 shares, it's 500 bucks. So my job right now is to look for 10 cents a day in the market that I can pick up. And I don't see it right now. OCGN is 10 cents, it's kind of hard to get on it because of the float and the price, but that's my job, 10 cents a day right now. So I've got to look for it. Now, certainly even in a cold market, it's not impossible to get 20, 30, 40 cents. But since I've had a couple of red days, my goal is 10 cents right now. So I'm gonna to try to get 10 cents today with 6,000 shares and see if I can walk away with five, 600 bucks. ACY, yeah, I don't know about that one. EBET had a good first day, but the last three days not as good. It did rally yesterday, as it turns out, off of 20, up to 25, but I think that most smart traders are gonna leave this one alone. The risk is just probably too high, it's too choppy. None of volume, spreads are too big, so you get burned on something a couple times, you don't really wanna go back for it. Netflix, I don't really, uh, you know, I'm not sure. It does look interesting, possibly as a long over 507. Again, it's a higher price stock, obviously. It's a large cap, but it's a flat top at 507.85. The spread on it right now is 65 cents, 505.35 by 506. So you've got fairly big spreads on it, only 789,000 shares of volume. Uh, the news uh, was not great yesterday, so I don't know. But the 200 moving average is at 501, so 501 could be a good spot for a bounce. So we could see what it does around 500. It's a possibility. All right, so that's the game plan here with about two and a half minutes to the bell. I'll put up my disclaimer again for those on Facebook and YouTube. As a reminder that day trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money. Even experienced traders like me sometimes lose money and my results are not typical. So I encourage you to trade in a simulator before you put real money on the line. Do not try to blindly follow me or anyone else. And as a reminder, the morning show will end at the end of this week uh, as I go into uh, kind of summer uh, schedule, traveling and things like that. We'll still be streaming in the chat room, but not streaming on YouTube. So I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Hope to see some of you guys in our workshop at 1 p.m today, the replay of the one that I taught earlier this year. And uh, I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning for Thankful Thursday. And we'll see maybe if 
uh, we have some better opportunities on Thankful Thursday. All right, see you all.